Good evening. If you would at this time, please silence your cell phones and be advised that these proceedings are being recorded. For those physically present with us in the council chambers, and welcome to all of you, if you um, desire to address the council during the meeting, please complete a request to speak form. They're available at the front entrance and then present it to the city clerk. Speakers both physically present and those participating via Zoom will be called upon at the appropriate time. And each person is allowed three minutes speaking time. Our city clerk will now make a Zoom broadcasting announcement. Thank you, Madam Mayor. As of June 15th, the city of Grand Terrace reopened its public meetings. If you would like to participate telephonically and speak on an agenda item, you can access the meeting by dialing 1-669-900-9128, enter meeting ID number 862-7364-3070, and password number 910148. You will be placed in the waiting room muted until it is your turn to speak. You may also submit your comments by sending them to CC Public Comment at grandterrace-ca.gov. City of Grand Terrace thanks you for doing your part preventing the spread of COVID-19. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. This time I will call to order the City Council meeting of the City of Grand Terrace for December 14th, 2021. And tonight we have uh, Pastor Greg Boatwright from the Church on the Hill who will be offering our invocation immediately following that. Our interim city manager, Michael Milheiser, will lead the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you would, Pastor Boatwright, come forward. And those of you who are able to, please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Christmas season, a time that reminds us of peace, and joy, and love. And Lord, we just pray that tonight you would preside over this meeting and God, that you would bless each one that's come here tonight, Lord, who loves their community. Lord, we pray that uh, there would just be a wonderful sense of uh, unity and, um, and ability to discuss. And God, we pray, Lord, that you would bring solutions to the issues that are at hand. God, that this community, Grand Terrace, might experience peace and prosperity and all the things that come from your hand, Lord. So we just pray you would give wisdom to those who lead and um, blessings to the citizens that are of this community that are here that love this, this community. So God, we just thank you for your goodness. Let your peace and your presence, your joy and your love be here this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would please place your hand over your heart and recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the greatest country in the world, the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, visible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor Greg. Thank you, Mr. Milheiser. Madam City Clerk, may we have roll call, please? Councilmember Allen? Here. Councilmember Wilson? I am here. Mayor Pro Tem Hussey? Present. Mayor McNabo? Present. Councilmember Robles is absent. Madam Mayor, you have a quorum. Oh, thank you so much. Do we have any reordering of additions to or removal of items from the agenda? Madam Mayor, um, we are going to remove the closed session item pertaining to the appointment of the city manager. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Then we will move forward with our special presentations. We have three tonight. First is a new employee introduction, and who will be doing that for us? Luis Gardia. Okay. I had, I had misread it, and I thought, we already met Louise. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Mayor, um, fellow council members, uh, Luis Gardea, city uh, building official. I would like to take this time and opportunity to introduce our brand new permit tech. Um, very excited for her to start and join the Grand Terrace family, uh, Anna Martin. Thank you. 
Welcome, Ms. Martin. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Mayor and fellow council members. My name is Anna Martin. I am the new building permit technician. I previously was the interim management analyst for Public Works, working closely alongside Eric Weck. I have a bachelor's in political science and a minor in Spanish. Additionally, I have a master's degree in political science. Prior to coming to the city of Grand Terrace, I was a Western Riverside Council of Governments Fellow at the city of San Jacinto, working in the city manager's office, assisting in special projects, performing research in community development and homeless services initiatives. I look forward to continuing to serve members of the public here at the city of Grand Terrace. Thank you. All right, welcome. And so for our next two, do we have uh, Ms. Vercus here today? Oh, well, hello, Julia. I'm sorry, I didn't recognize you. But it's okay. I, I, I need to work on my vision, apparently. I have no vision either. Good evening, Madam Mayor and City Council and everyone here. I'd like to introduce my um, red ribbon. No, wait, we're doing the trunk or treat. You're doing the, both of them. Okay. So we're gonna do trunk or treat first. Okay. I would like to introduce, you know, it's almost like the same volunteers. These women are awesome. Um, we have Chastity Kotze. Come on, come on up with me. Laura Viafuete, Miss Jen Parker, Rachel. And these are just a few of the volunteers on the Foundation of Grand Terrace Youth. I just wanna say with the Foundation of Grand Terrace um, Youth Committee, Chastity and I were asked to be a part of it uh, during COVID. So we joined, we said, yes, we'll do it, we'll be there. And it was a, a wonderful group of people that have been there for a really long time, um, holding together these events and collaborating with the city and other areas. And then they all retired at once. <laughs> and so we were like, well, what do we do? Uh, so we're new to the foundation, but we are committed and devoted. And one of the things that we wanted to see happen was something fun for our children during Halloween, something safe. And I, we're here today because we want to thank the city and council members for the support that you gave us. Um, Eric, where's Eric? Eric and his maintenance team, we had Alex and Richie there that night, were absolutely stellar. And I couldn't believe it when I saw Eric there from start to finish. It was a wonderful, safe event. They were there, 100% devoted. I was very impressed with that. So we brought, I have the hookup with the Girl Scouts, by the way. So we brought some treats for all of you, and we have um, some that we want to specifically go to the maintenance crew, Eric's crew, to thank them for all of their cheerfulness and hard work for making sure that event went smoothly. And I know Chastity wants to say a few words as well. I just wanted to make sure to iterate, thank you very much for your support and allowing us to uh, serve the youth in the community. We appreciate you all very much. One of our uh, committee members made a wonderful video. I also want to uh, thank Lieutenant Lane. He, um, we asked him if he could please have some um, law enforcement there just to kind of represent not only one, not only two, but there were three of them handing out candy and greeting and cheering the kids on. So it was a really wonderful event. So, with no further ado, we'd like to show you what happened that night, all the fun and excitement. I think we had about 150 cars come through, which roughly equated to about 500 people.
So thank you to the city for providing funds so that we could provide extra candy. Every, um, you know, the real heroes of that day are the volunteer in our community. We had businesses, uh, residents, uh, different people, just uh, community uh, people volunteer to do a trunk and bring candy. But we had the extra candy and all of it was gone by the end of the night. So uh, thank you for thank you for your support in our second annual trunk or treat. Well, and I, I thank all the volunteers and the residents that you are thanking. But what I will say is that without you ladies coming together to make this happen and allowing, you know, and coming and having the city partner with you, it wouldn't have happened at all. So thank you so much for your time and effort and, and uh, enthusiasm for this. Thank you so much. I guess I'm staying up here. Um, my name is Julia Francos. I'm here representing the Red Ribbon Week at Terrace View Elementary School. Just a little backstory. This is my sixth year at Terrace View. I have twins who are 11 and in the sixth grade. I started in kindergarten and I took on the Red Ribbon Week. Um, I feel like it's an important week. Red Ribbon represents um, saying no to drugs, uh, helping children understand why it's important to make good choices, to build their self-esteem so that they can um, have the confidence to say no because peer pressure is real. And uh, from day one, I, we were supported by the city council. And so even more of a backstory, I worked in Grand Terrace in 1990 at a school for about 11 years. So that was my first introduction to Grand Terrace. I love the little town. And that 10 year, 11 year time that I worked here, I decided to live here. So I've lived here, so that's 30 years. But it wasn't until I had my children and they started elementary school that I really became involved in this city, in this community. And I love it. I feel like that part of me knowing the community and knowing the city the way that I do really shows that we are so fortunate to live in such a small town that we're willing to rally together for our children. And so Red Ribbon Week at Terrace View has been built on let's be healthy. How do we be healthy? Let's stay healthy. And um, so I would like my Red Ribbon Committee to come forward. They're coming back up here. That's Laura, Rachel. Marla, Angela, we have a wonderful crew and it was a little different this year because we had a year of COVID so we had to start fresh, a little bit fresh. We were really fortunate, we met a really neat person who kind of spearheaded, helped us out in so many ways and that's dun 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 dun, Lieutenant Lane. I had not met him before and all of a sudden he was there and he was there through the whole process very supportive uh, in every way. We even took about 400 posters and dropped them off at the Sheriff Central Station for them to judge, and they judged them all. So with the support of uh, the city, you presented our school with funds to purchase uh, physical equipment. One of the things that we focus on is physical education and staying healthy. Usually the high school students come out and they have a day of being on the right team and they engage with our students and they couldn't do that this year. But we were able to present 32 classrooms with a basketball, dodgeball, soccer ball, football. And if you are ever in the back on Brentwood, in the back of the school, while they're outside playing, you're going to see multitudes of children playing in groups with those balls that you provided for them so that they can remember that health is first. Uh, this is um, a kind of a sad moment for me too because it's my last year at Terrace View. And I'm here uh, to ask the City Council and Madam Mayor to remember these lovely ladies because they will be taking red ribbon and they take it to heart as well. They're our children. And I hope that they will be able to come to you and ask for support and that you will support them because it is a community, it reaches all of our community when we help our kids say no to drugs. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it, no one is immune to that, so it's everyone. Um, the ladies want to say anything? No? Thank you very much for your support. Yes. <laughs> All right. We made a wonderful video, and I want to show you that during the week of Red Ribbon, the things that we do, we're PTA, so this, the things that we do is we introduce them to, well, we had not one helicopter this year, but two helicopters. We don't expect that ever, ever, but it was wonderful this year. Our kids were just like, wow, this is amazing. But they pledge to be drug free and they tie ribbon on the back fence and, uh, and hopefully we picked up all the ribbon and got it all cleaned up at the end of the week. But the, the 
ribbon was there to pledge and to show that we make good choices. Uh, in the video, you'll also see one event that we do with the students. Uh, we help them make pledges. And it's just paper, but they get to write on that little pledge uh, uh, to be drug free. And we made a few video because the, the children listen. If you listen to what they say, they listen to what we're teaching them. They're listening and they're learning to say no, that it's bad for you. You know, they're little, they're elementary, so we're not gonna tell them exactly what every drug is because that's not our job. Our job is to let them know that drugs and alcohol are bad for you. And as they get older, they'll learn it and they'll remember that. But they do remember, and you'll see in the video. Also, it's Stater Brothers uh, gave us paper bags to do poster contest. And this year, because of our wonderful community, a lot of people donated, businesses donated prizes for our children. Um, different kinds of dance, sports, art lessons. Again, we're, we're focusing on being healthy. We had 18 winners. And that means in every grade level, from K through sixth grade, there were three winners. And um, it was amazing. So we're gonna show you the video of our week and see what happens at Terry's for You. My hope and wish for my students is that they become successful in the future. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. Uh -huh. You rock. I need you guys to stop vaping. It's not good for your health or for your life. You'll... Uh, if you die, you won't be able to see your family members anymore. It's not good for you. Who are you talking to, honey? My brothers. Oh, so what do we say to his brothers? No, no, baby. Choose healthy. Free. Free. You're a good brother. Yeah. Good job. Yes, thank good. you. You're welcome. You you help your brothers, okay? I will. Give them that important message and show them that drugs are not the way to go. Be healthy, right, guys? Yes. Yeah. So does Red Ribbon mean that you say no to drugs? Yeah! Does Red Ribbon mean that you eat healthy vegetables? Yeah! Healthy fruits? Yeah! Clean your room? Yeah! Listen to your teacher? Yeah! Help your mommy? Yeah! Do good things? Yeah! Be a good friend? Yeah! Always pick up trash, even if it's not your trash? Yeah! Yay! <laughs> good job, girls. Hi, boys. What, what grade are you in? Second. Second grade. Can you introduce yourself? Say your name. What is your name? Daniel. I am Julian. Julian? Nice. Devin. Devin. Nathan. Nathan. Travis. Travis. So you've been learning about um, Red Ribbon Week this week, right? What did you learn to this week? What's good for you and what's not good for you? To not do drugs is good for you. To not do drugs so you can have a healthy body. Uh -huh. yeah. And go to bed early. Go to bed early. That's a good healthy but habit. And listen to water. Drink water. Drink water. Listen to who? Your mom. Your and, mom. And eat a lot of vegetables every day. Oh my goodness, that's Stay a good one. Why'd you give me a Gotta microphone? And, uh, Why'd you give me a turned off microphone? Be good. Be good. And listen to your dad, too. And listen to your dad. That's very important. So do you guys know that? Yeah. 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 So you always say no, no to what? Say no to? Drugs. And yeah. everybody. Yes. Good job, that's a really good message. Okay, can I take a group picture of you guys? Yeah. Your name? Amber Rose. Ha Lauren, what is your name? Amber Rose. Amber Rose. Emily. Emily. Ava. Ava. Haley. Haley. Gia. Gia, those are beautiful names. All right, girls. Say no to us. Awesome. And say yes to healthy things. Yes, 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 Don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. Wait, wait, I'm not. 
My name is Jason. My name's Jalen. My name's Raylan. My name is Ava. And this is part of the sixth grade ASD. And you have messages for Red Ribbon Week? Um, let's say that to not do drugs. Do drugs. Drugs are not good for you. They can do a lot of bad things to you. You gotta stay positive. That's right. I have a family member who did drugs and it does not end well, so just never do them. All right, good advice. Eat healthy. Stay healthy and be healthy. And be a friend to everyone. Very good. Okay, what do you say to drugs, guys? No! Hi, my name's Allie. And what's your friend's name? My name's Ava. Do you have a message for us, girls? Say no to drugs. Very good. And say yes to what? Hugs. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, ladies. apologize that it was so long. This is something we showed our students at our school as well um, to recap the week. And it looks like a lot of fun, but the most important thing about this week was that it was an important message to our students. Every day they engaged in learning something really important, and we made it meaningful to them so that they could remember and embrace it. And if you look and you saw all those little faces, one day those faces are going to be grown-ups in, in this community, and they are going to be wonderful citizens in our community. So thank you to the City of Grand Terrace, City Council, to Lieutenant Lane, and everything that you did to help make this week wonderful. You, you are amazing, and we appreciate you so much. Um, and I want to also thank this amazing Red Ribbon Committee. These are volunteers, parents. They worked really hard to get donations and um, to be present and to be involved in our Red Ribbon Week, and I, I, it wouldn't have happened without them. So thank you, ladies. Thank you. I want to share my appreciation with, with all of you who are part of this Red Ribbon Week committee. Thank you so much for taking the care that you have for your own children and extending it beyond to the other children in our community. These are very important lessons for them to learn at this age. And, and you've done such a wonderful job of making it something that they want to be part of. Also, thank you to our sheriff for their support for this event. You did a great job, and, and you brought two helicopters. 
That's just amazing. So one more round of applause for the, the work we have here. And thank you for being here tonight to allow us to, to share in the successes you've had and the things that you've done in this community and to allow us to at least recognize you a little bit. So we will move back to our agenda. We have our consent calendar. The consent calendar items are expected to be routine and non-controversial. They will be acted upon by the city council at one time without discussion. Any council member, staff member, or citizen may request removal of an item from the consent calendar for discussion. Do we have any requests to remove items from the consent calendar at this time? None on our end. No? All right. So I'll entertain a motion for the consent calendar. I'll move, <clears throat> excuse me, Mayor, I'll move the consent calendar forward. Second. All right, so a motion by Council Member Allen, second by Council Member Wilson. Please call the vote. Council Member Allen? Yes. Council Member Wilson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hussey? Yes. Mayor McNabo? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you so much. We have public comment at this time. It's an opportunity for members of the public to comment on items not appearing on the regular agenda. Because of restrictions contained in California law, the City Council may not discuss or act on any item not on the agenda, but may briefly respond to statements made or ask a question for clarification. I may also request a brief response from staff to questions raised during public comment, or I may request a matter to be agendized for a future meeting at the agreement of my um, fellow council members. So are there any requests to speak at this time? Thank you. All right, Mr. Johan Gallo. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. I want to thank you for your support for the Santa Claus cruise and toy drive. Uh, needless to say, Lieutenant Lane did step up in a big way uh, with the escort, but we got through the entire route. It made it safer for everyone. I do want to appreciate the funds that were extended to us for the event. The good news is we saved money because the Lions Club stepped up and they covered the $2 million insurance policy that was required for the event. And so the only fees that we have is for the permit for the event and I understand that's going to be covered with the funds that we're getting from the foundation, so I appreciate that. Also wanna thank the uh, ass assistant deputy, assistant chief, uh, the fire department for providing uh, the fire squad for the event. Uh, that turned out very well. And then Mr. Weiss, uh, Mr. Weiss for all the work that he and Mr. Milhauser did for getting this thing moved through quickly. Uh, if all goes well, maybe we'll do it again next year. And so uh, I think the general reaction has been very positive. Uh, it far exceeded our expectations. Uh, they collected over a thousand toys for kids that otherwise aren't gonna have a Christmas. Uh, Grand Terrace Cars and Coffee is going to continue uh, this weekend uh, with the toy giveaway and the food giveaway to the families in need. So with that, I appreciate everybody's support and their help. Uh, Council Member Hussey, I appreciate you volunteering your truck to be one of the collection vehicles. Uh, needless to say, it turned out really well and uh, appreciate your time, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gallo. And thank you for all the work that you put into that nice parade. I think it was enjoyed by everybody that saw it. I saw lots of comments and heard lots of comments. All right, are there any requests to speak during this time? No, Madam Mayor. All right, so we'll close public comment and we will move back to our agenda under public hearings. We have one. So the public hearing is um, to consider adoption of a resolution relating to rate increases for residential, commercial, multifamily housing, solid waste collection, recycling and disposal service rates. So tonight we will um, state the public hearing item. We will have an announcement uh, opportunity for announcement of any ex parte communications, conflict of interest, and or recusals. Uh, we will have a staff presentation and recommendation on the public hearing item. And so then council has an opportunity to ask questions of staff. After that, we will open the public hearing. 
the applicant will have an opportunity to give a presentation. Uh, council will have opportunity to ask questions of the applicant. Then we will ask for public testimony in favor of or against the public hearing item. And if there are, if there is testimony against, uh, the applicant has an opportunity for rebuttal. We will then close the public hearing, council will deliberate, and we will vote. So, presenting this item of uh, public hearing ado uh, consideration adoption of resolution relating to rate increases for residential, commercial, and multifamily housing solid waste collection, recycling and disposal service rates. Um, we have Eric Wick, Public Works Director and City Engineer. Yes, good evening, uh, Madam Mayor, City Council. Eric Weck, Public Works Director, City Engineer. Um, tonight I am joined by Mike Aragon, Vice President for Burtec, as well as uh, Shanita Tillman, uh, Public Works Management Analyst. And uh, she will be presenting tonight's presentation for the rate increase. All right. Hello, Ms. Tillman. Thank you, uh, Mayor McNabo, Mayor Pro Tem, and City Council. Shanita Tillman, Management Analyst. The staff report before you supports the following goal. And that's to ensure our fiscal viability by ensuring an appropriate cost recovery for services. The City of Grand Terrace contracts with Burtec to provide refuse hauling services. Burtec has requested uh, various rate increases on the basis of its absorbing rising costs. Rate increases will be proposed for both residential, multifamily, and commercial customer, excuse me, customers. The last rate adjustment was approved to August 2019 and went into effect September 1st, 2019. To meet Prop 218 requirements, a notice of public hearing was sent to all Burtec customers on October 13th, 2021. Tonight's presentation will go over the following. Residential refuse rates for 96 gallon and 64 gallon containers. How our rates compare to other cities and commercial refuse rates. So residential proposed rate increase, and this is for 96 gallon. The current rate is $29.13. It will increase or is proposed to be increased to $30.62, which is a 5.1% increase. For the 64 gallon uh, trash bin, the current rate is $27.67. The proposed rate is $29.12, a 5.2% increase. Uh, and this is a chart uh, for our kind of local cities. Grand Terrace is in the middle of the pack at $32.62. On the low end, uh, Bloomington's rates are $20.90 and Loma Linda is $39.24. Uh, for commercial, uh, the commercial 96 gallon bin, the current rate is $39.28. The proposed rate is $43.65, an 11.1% increase. And for a three yard bin, it's $172.21. And the proposed rate is $206.95, a 20.2% increase. Oh, excuse me. In conclusion, rates would go into effect uh, if passed on January 1st, 2022. And as of 6 p.m., we have received uh, 32 uh, return protests. And staff is recommending that we conduct a public hearing to consider the adoption rate increases for residential and commercial solid waste collection, recycling, and disposal service rates for fiscal year 2021-2022, and adopt resolutions setting, setting forth residential and commercial solid waste collections, recycling, and disposal services for fiscal year 21-22. Uh, that concludes my presentation. I'm open to answer any questions, and I also have Vice President of Burtech to, pres uh, to answer questions as well. Thank you, Ms. Tillman. Thank Are there you. questions of staff at this time? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Hussey. Thank you. I just want to know why the three yard bands up 20%. What's the reason for that? That's a significant cost for our businesses. I would have to defer to uh, Mike Eric when. Thank you. 
while he's making his way up, I will um, step back and ask, do we have any um, ex parte communications, conflict of interest, and or recusals that need to be announced at this time from the council? All right, seeing none. Mr. Ergen. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Mike, uh, Mike Ergen, and also council members. Mike Ergen, Vice President with Burtek Waste Industries. Uh, council Member Hussey, the, uh, the rates that were shown on the uh, presentation tonight um, include a three month rate delay. Uh, it was uh, indicated in the mailing that went out uh, under the 218 notice. So it artificially increases those rates because that uh, the rate um, adjustment should have gone in um, uh, technically by count by contract back in July of, uh, of this year. Um, we have delayed it and, and uh, for a number of reasons and we absorb some months um, but it does include a three month uh, delay that is now going to be um, repaid back over the next six months. So it does add a portion to the rate above and beyond the average uh, CPI increases and the increases or adjustments in disposal and recycling costs. Uh, however, um, come July 1 of 22, that component, that three month catch-up fee will drop off. And so it will either lower the rate or make uh, room for next year's rate adjustment. So is that three, uh, three yard bend, the 20%, that's for everyone that you're servicing, all the cities? It's, it's different per city depending on uh, the city fees. Some city fees are at 10%, some are at 15%, some are at 20%. Um, the weight per, per bin, some, some bins are a little heavier than others in various communities. Um, and any other uh, programs that might be built into that rate, and they vary. So when you look at a, um, a rate survey, uh, and this gives you a, a broad view, but um, when the comparative came up, showing Bloomington at one end and Loma Linda at, at another, um, it's not a, a real apples to apples comparison. However, we need to let you know what the rates are in other cities. But there are a lot of variables that have an impact on that rate. If it was just netted down to the service component of the rate, not, not taking in consideration the recycling costs or the disposal costs or any city fees or other programs, the service component of the rate is pretty much uh, standard across, uh, across the board. All right, thank you. Okay. And remember, after we get into the public hearing, Mr. Arrigan does have a presentation that he will give. And so I'm going to ask uh, again, do we have questions of staff? Uh, Council Member Allen. Thanks, Mayor. So I'm, I'm just wondering why this doesn't happen, why we don't do this annually. If we did this annually, these 20% increases would not seem so, I mean, like if we had done this annually, it would be a 10%. Now it's granted with the residential can, containers, I mean, what is it, like a buck and a half, you know, I mean, that's, but annually, when we're budgeting, like I budget annually, my family budget, mm -hmm. our city budgets annually, and I'm kind of curious about that. It just seems like it would be a lot smaller pill to have to swallow. Uh, Councilman Allen, I am 100% in agreement with you. Our, uh, our contract calls for an annual adjustment. Um, but we work with cities when we are asked if we could put it off for a year or we could put it off for a period of time. Um, that happens to be the case in, in the city of Grand Terrace. We haven't had an increase since 2019. Um, even when it came up this year, um, the July increase, we weren't able to move forward with it and it did get delayed. Um, I don't want to, you know, blame anything or anybody for that. There's just circumstances that came about, but we're prepared every year. We have a, a particular due date to 
present uh, our annual increase. And it is based on a year over year CPI amount on the service component and then the disposal and processing costs. And that's all that goes into our rate adjustments. So you're absolutely correct. If they're done annually and on time, um, you would have a, a smaller increase, yet you would have them more often. Uh, you would have had an increase in 2020, and you would have had another increase in July of this year. So it's, you know, kind of pick your poison. So is it, is it something that we're not, we're dropping the ball on, on our end, that we're not getting done? Um, I mean, if that's the case, I'm just... Yeah, if, and I, if, no, it, if there's a savings involved in doing it that way, then no, no, there, there, no? It, it would be the same either way. As I said, what we're making up for um, here is, is the same uh, dollar amount. But usually when you have an increase, it's spread over 12 months. We have a, a, a portion of an increase that's going to be spread over six months. Um, and um, uh, I do know that, that we present um, increase numbers. And um, uh, even last year, um, uh, I believe we were asked to, to uh, postpone that, that increase. Um, and I don't know uh, reasoning. We just do our best to work with staff and, and, and uh, make it work out. So again, I don't want to blame anybody or anything. It's just uh, circumstances that have come about. Um, but the, the better we can get at uh, an annual review, um, I think it will work well for the community as well as Burton. Okay. Okay. Thank, um, thank. Thank you for that. And I just, uh, I don't. I just don't understand why something. Why we would ask a contractor to postpone a rate adjustment when it's not like it's coming out of our general. I mean, this is something. Well, I. I, I believe that's a conversation yeah. that council needs to have with staff. I agree. Okay. Councilmember Wilson, question for staff. No, actually. Uh, Mike, yes, sir. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in order to be able to justify to even come for an increase, you go through your data, you determine at each one of the integers what your costs are and what a reasonable amount of money uh, would be to be able to run your business. And in the long run, you could technically price yourself out of the market if you continued to uh, to do. Uh, uh, annual increases or every two years or every three years or whatever that would put you way past what we could bid the thing out for again. And so in the long run, uh, it's up to our great staff to, to check these things against what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. And if they find a need to uh, go ahead and bid the service out in a competitive bid, which we've done in the past, mm -hmm. then, you know, it's market driven. So I appreciate your, your hard work on uh, trying to keep these things in line. And I know we're heading towards uh, a real interesting time with the solid waste situation. Yes. So we'll just kind of hold on to our, our uh, hold on to our hats. So thank yep. you. I appreciate that, Council Member Wilson. Um, one of the things I will say, um, with regard to our contract and the way that the contract has been set up here in the city of Grand Terrace is that um, our, only, our only increase is whatever is reflected in CPI. So for example, if the consumer price index just for discussion's sake was zero, we would have zero increase. If disposal increases were zero, we would have a zero increase. If there was a recycling market that actually had a positive, as it used to have, there would technically be a credit. And you could see your rate just go down without it going up. Those are the factors that drive our rate increases. Um, not to, to correct you, but to um, identify, it's not an arbitrary amount that we would say, okay, we need an extra 10% to help our bottom line. So the um, the costs are identified and then those costs are adjusted according to the contract that the city of Grand Terrace has, um, has put forward and it's a very good contract. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it seems as though we're headed down this path, so I am going to officially open the public hearing. 
And while you are still here, oh, Mr. Okay. Applicant, do you have a presentation for us? Um, uh, to be honest with you, um, we, have, we have talked about uh, the rates on the last few uh, council meetings. I, I, I don't necessarily have a, a, a presentation in particular, uh, Mayor, but uh, again, I would more than happy to go over any questions that the council may have with regard to rates. My, uh, our, our business is, is, is pretty basic. Um, yeah, we uh, uh, are out there every week picking up trash, picking up recyclables, picking up green waste. This past year, we've had a few hiccups, and, and hopefully we have uh, addressed those uh, situations. So I'm, I'm glad um, that that has, uh, has happened. And, uh, um, but, uh, but outside of that, uh, unless there was something in particular that you would like me to respond to. Uh, well, as it says that I'm supposed to conduct this public hearing, that you give a presentation, we ask any questions of you that we haven't already asked. Okay. And then um, it's time for the public to speak. Very good. And then, and then depending on any of the, the arguments against, you'll have an opportunity to Absolutely. rebut those, okay? So are there any further questions at this time for the applicant? Council Member Allen. <clears throat> Thanks, Mayor. This, this is for, this is for Mike. So, or Mr. Yes, um, the the um, organic waste, the new laws governing yes. organic that are going into effect next year. It, will this rate increase um, cover that, or is that something that we're going to be looking at an, another uh, another uh, fee just for that particular? Has that been worked out yet? Yes, the um, the increases with regard to the uh, uh, residential food waste processing and all of the elements um, included uh, all the new work that's included with SB 1383 will be part of your uh, 22 rate adjustment, as it will be with all of the surrounding cities and counties, um, actually up and down the state. So as I mentioned before, this was a rate increase that uh, technically was for uh, fiscal year 21-22. Um, and uh, in, in most cities, it goes into effect July 1. We, this was delayed a bit, uh, but it's for that period of time. Um, we are working with staff to incorporate the um, implementation of the 1383 program, uh, even prior to uh, any rate uh, adjustment or approval, uh, because Cal Recycle requires uh, action by January 1 of 22. Um, we are going to start with our public education and outreach. Um, we'll be working with staff on programs and costs. Uh, those will um, hopefully come forward uh, to council for consideration. Um, we hope to get approval um, uh, by July 1 um, or earlier, if, if possible, so that we can begin the implementation of that program on a residential basis. That's the big push this year with 1383. It includes a component for residential food waste recycling because we've already moved down the path for commercial food and the various recycling elements. So the new one uh, for residents will be um, uh, food waste recycling and we'll, we'll be um, uh, hopefully having community meetings, uh, a lot of mailings and, and uh, um, we have a, a number of videos that, uh, that folks will be able to access the, via a QR code. Uh, so that public education is gonna be huge so that by the time we uh, are ready to start collecting food waste, hopefully our residents will be very well informed. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. That sounds, that's encouraging, uh, thank you. And about my earlier question, I'll ask staff of that. I won't bother him with it. Okay, thank you. Any further questions for the applicant before I open the public? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, me. don't go very far. Okay. It's time for public testimony. Oh. Do we have a request to speak during this time? I've got to remember the process. I apologize. That's okay. All right. So I'm going to ask you to yield the microphone. Oh. Very good. Our first speaker is Scott Welsher. Good evening. 
Good evening. And my name is Scott Welshert. I've been a resident here for 44 years. Raised two boys here. I'm the original owner of my house. And I've watched this town just raise and raise and raise money after money. It, it just, I don't know how they, they can raise the trash like they're doing right now when people are hurting so bad. I mean, hurting. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it. I've, I've had one son, I almost lost him to COVID. Uh, I'm sure there might be one or two other people in here that's lost some relatives. There's people that are totally unemployed and they wanna raise this trash right now. I, I, don't, I don't see it to be justified. And I, I just, it just doesn't make any sense. And then I also, if I'm not standing out there when they're collecting my trash, especially my green waste, they put it all over the street. They do it on Friday mornings, right, uh, right after my, uh, guys have, uh, my lawn guys have already left. If I'm not standing there, they go right on to the next house, then the next house, and the next house, and they don't care. But that's not just the green waste, it's all, all the trash cans. They don't pick up the trash after themselves. They don't care. I have called them because they've, they've spilled hydraulic oil all on my, in front of my house. I've had to get out there and clean it up. And they want to charge me more? I don't see it. I just, I just don't see it. Like I said, I'm the original owner of my house. I've lived here for a heck of a long time. I know they got to raise their prices. They got bills to pay like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. But right now, sorry. I, I just think it's totally wrong. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Welsher. I appreciate you being here and sharing your perspective. Also, I'm going to ask if staff will contact you so that when you call and complain, about the service that you also let our staff know so that they can look at it from a contract management standpoint as well. I've called several times and they say they're going to have management call me back. They never call me back. Thank never. you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Glenn Kendall. Good evening, Madam Mayor. Um, my voice is pretty much echoes what Mr. Wilshire said. The problem being is that when they dump the green waste, the machine whips back so fast that the lid just sprays grass 15, 20 feet away from where it's at. So if it's not out, you know, into the middle of the street somewhere, it just ends up all over the driveway. That also, we've got, uh, we're in a cul-de-sac where one of the neighbors decides that he needs to have his car parked there. Most of the cans are supposed to be at the curb. Well, they move their cans out beyond their car, making it tougher for the uh, truck to get around. I have mine at the curb, and when they come by, it's really difficult for them to get to it because they've narrowed the radius to turn in. And uh, I've talked to code enforcement. They do zip, not a thing. They, I've taken pictures where the trash cans are literally 15 to 20 feet out into the middle of the cul-de-sac, showing them what's going on. They don't take, you know, they don't call them or contact them, make a, arrangements for something different. So that, along with the rate increase, I'm kind of opposed to as being a single person. I don't produce that much waste. I put out my solid waste can once every three weeks. During the summer, my grass may go out once a month because uh, when the gardener gets through, it goes up maybe two, three inches in the can. So for one person, and then my uh, uh, recycle bin, it may go out once every three to four months. So I don't get where I'm getting charged the same amount as somebody else, but yet they don't differentiate. So it's like, I'm almost to the point where I could say, I'd like to cancel my services and go, go to the dump, you know, once every two months with uh, a pickup truck load, and probably pay a heck of a lot less other than the rates when you go as an individual are extremely high, so. That's just one thought that an individual that doesn't produce much is really taking it in the shorts. 
Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Kendall. I appreciate you taking the time to come in tonight. All right, those are my last two that I have in front of me. Are there any other any other requests to speak at this time? No, Madam Mayor. All right, so we have protests that came in. How would you like to handle that? We, we just we have 32 residents who voted against they, the... They sent in saying that they vote against... Correct. All right, so at this time I will close the public testimony portion of our public hearing, and I will bring our applicant back up. All right, Ms. Jerrigan, you do not have anyone on your side with respect to this, so I think you have some explaining to do. <laughs> Very good, and and uh, it, it is it is typical, and... Um, with ever, whenever we have rate, rate adjustments, I think the uh, one gentleman um, did acknowledge that, <clears throat> again, year over year, um, our employees um, are compensated. Um, equipment costs, fuel, uh, insurance, all, all of the factors that you want in a reliable company. Uh, if there are service issues, I need to know about them. It could be identified to a route um, or a piece of equipment, something that can be corrected. But um, if we're receiving calls, we even made arrangements, as you know, Mayor, um, for after hours calls. Um, staff uh, receives information and passes on to us. So if it's a service issue, I absolutely need to get that uh, taken care of. Um, but uh, uh, as it relates to uh, uh, the, uh, the increases, uh, unfortunately everything is increasing. We do have a mandatory service um, uh, program here in the city of Grand Terrace and um, uh, a lot of times uh, that's in response to state legislation, health and safety issues, uh, a number of factors play into that. Uh, part and parcel to a lot of the rates that are out there uh, or our rates that are out there include costs that are in response to legislative actions going back to 1989 um, with AB 939 uh, and all the subsequent legislation that has gone, gone forward. Um, so it, it's tough for a resident to see and understand that, but those are all components of the rate um, the rate is, is very complex, uh, and then, um, but the good thing is, is that the city of, of Grand Terrace has a um, defined uh, escalator, if you will, on those rates. There is also a provision that if it goes, if our costs go above and beyond that, that we can appeal to council for an extraordinary. We've never, in the many years that we've been here, uh, in Grand Terrace, um, while the opportunities have been there, we have never asked the city for that. Um, so we will um, do our best to, to minimize these increases and uh, absolutely from a service standpoint, uh, there is there is no excuse for um, trash or green waste left on the ground. Uh, I would um, like to have uh, information with regard to those addresses so I can double check with our operations. All right, thank you. At this time, we will close the public hearing and we'll bring it back to council to deliberate on this item and then move to a vote. Any of my colleagues wish to speak on this at this time? Council Member Allen. Well, I can certainly understand. I mean, the, um, Mr. Aragon has explained to us how the fee structure works and the stipulations that are put on them and, and their rate increases and, and all that. And <clears throat> the only thing that's been in the news, the headlines of the news for the last you know several months is inflation and the cost of everything going up. And certainly it's going up for them just like it is for us. Um, I, th I really respect what the, Mr. Wilshire came forward and, and was talking about. Um, you know, I presented it to my wife and she was showing her the notice of public hearing with all the information that came with it. And um, 
And even though I was, like I said to my, you know, I said, well, it's like a buck and a half for us for per can for the residential, you know, it's not like that big a deal. But really, it, it can be a big deal for some people, and it can add up, you know, when you've got three cans, or you might need a, a bin for, you know, some your work you're doing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I can I can re really respect that, uh, you know, what you're, what you had to say for us. Um, and also about the cans dropping waste on the street, you know. Um, I will say that um, I have called, and Mr. Aragon, like he said, he is uh, not him, just the customer service line, and they have respectfully, and they've sent somebody out, and they picked it up or had the driver go back. And on, one, on more than once, I've seen the driver stop, get out, pick it up. Once I saw a driver start to leave and he saw me watching and he stopped and backed up and he got out and he picked it up <laughs> and then he left <laughs> and i thought that was interesting so um yeah so i i uh yeah i just wanted to let the residents know that i respect what they're saying in in, in regards to this rate increase you know and those who voted the 30 so or so that voted sent, sent in their um you know, opinions on this. That's all I want to say, Mayor. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Allen. Councilmember Wilson. You know, I understand, uh, you know, our constituency and, and the plight that they have. You're not the only ones, that's for sure. And as we watch the numbers go up, I'm a numbers guy, and it, and it makes you sick to your stomach over time because you start to think, hey, you know, when am I going to get mine? Um, one thing though, I will say, we have found that over time, we end up with state mandates, uh, oftentimes because of a change in hier hierarchy, uh, state mandates that we receive absolutely no funds to be able to mitigate. And it happens a lot. And there's a move at this point for uh, some local jurisdictions to 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 come back on it with the state because uh, you can't keep dumping mandates on people without any funding. You know, it's like saying y you've got to accept uh, huge trucks coming across your paving, but we're not going to give you any money for it. It's just that's the way it's going to go. Uh, so I know it doesn't sound like much, but uh, we've got people that represent us at a, a higher level in the state level and don't be afraid you know your one letter or your one complaint to them on a on a an email or anything else might be the difference uh, you know one person uh, saying hey wait a minute you know I'm getting tired of taking this stuff out of my pocket uh, might be the difference and it might be the vote that says hey uh, we're going to have to get practical after a while an awful lot of administration up there at the state level and the federal level uh, that uh, get their checks all the time and then the rest of us get what dribbles down. So I, uh, I, feel, I feel your pain uh, and we'll, we'll continue to do the best we can to be able to keep things you know, as tight as we can. Thank you, Council Member. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. Um, this is, uh, Council Member Al is saying, you know, we get it once a year or whenever, but, you know, it seems like I always remember this agenda because we hear the same things over and over. And, you know, I, and I know longtime residents, I'm a longtime resident, and I'm voting for a pay increase for my own, you know, to do this. You know, I have to, I'm retired and on a fixed income. So, yeah, it hurts. It hurts when I look at see how much it's going to cost the businesses here. And everything's a a domino trickle effect. This gets raised, that gets raised. Minimum wage gets raised, you gotta go to, now our burger is $10. So um, we voted, well I didn't vote for it, but people voted to keep a gas increase tax. And what happens there? It's gonna come back to the businesses. Everything comes back to the consumer. Um, as we're saying, the CPI, the consumer, consumer price index, you know, and, and inflation 6.9. I know Social Security is given a 5.6 because of inflation rate this year um, for cost of living. 
But it all comes back, and it comes back to us, the consumer. I will say that Burtech, you know, I have issues too. You know, I go out there, I'm a resident, I watch them when they trash, and I called Mike on a couple of occasions, and, you know, they, they, uh, they talk to their drivers. You know, sometimes they need a little extra guidance and stuff. Um, but I know also Burtech during the recession in 2008 that they stopped all price increases so it didn't pass the, on to the consumers, and they took it in the chin for all the residents here in Grand Terrace. And I think it was for a couple of years before they raised the rates. And, you know, um, it does, it's, it's, it's hard. You know, we got to vote on, I, you know, we don't vote on for the electric company. We don't vote on for the water company. We don't vote on for anything else. You know, the cable TV, the cell phones, but this comes to us and it gives you guys the right to voice your opinions. But then again, like Councilman Al was saying, now we got another thing coming down the pipeline for this household food waste that we got to pay for. I'm just going to dump mine in the garbage disposal. I'm probably sure we're going to get hit on that too. I don't know. But everything comes down to the consumer and we're the consumer and bird tech, I believe has been more than fair with the residents. It, they don't want to raise the rates and, and the gentleman say, there that said, uh, yeah, you only go maybe once or take your trash can out three times a week. Well, they have a smaller trash bin. It's I guess it's a penny cheaper, but they do have smaller bins that you could get for a cheaper cost. And even going to the dump nowadays, is it costs a lot. I just took some stuff to the dump and it costs. So our city offers free dump, you know, for, um, for big ticket items, uh, electronic waste. Uh, we partner with, you know, oily can to make sure, you know, how hazmat waste is there. And that's all comes into this uh, cost savings that we're doing. And at residents, you know, it, there's also a thing we have to look at because some people don't pay their trash and sewers and it comes back to on the tax roll and stuff. And then, so bird tech's got to still continue to pick it up with an IOU. So there's a lot of factors that come in this and it's a lot of factors we have to look at. And I don't like voting to raise a price increase. I don't think, you know, but I also know that we have to maintain our city and Trash is a big thing. Some people just, you know, we don't, that's why we don't have illegal dumps because we have these certain programs in here. And if somebody does something, do dump illegally, we're just a phone call away and we pick it up right away. We don't just sit there and look at it forever. So that's part of the, the prices too. So, um, yeah, it's going to trickle down to us. And, um, you know, I'm concerned about the three yard bend, but I'm sure when grocery outlet or state everybody's got to pay more, we're going to be paying more for groceries on that too, just like we did for the fuel cost. It all came back down to us. So that's all I have, Mayor. All right, thank you. And I appreciate all of the opinions of my colleagues and echo them. I don't want to pay more money, but I know that costs are going up. And if we had the ability in our budget to offset those costs, we could do that. So when we have an opportunity for staff to consider um, sending our legislators in Sacramento a, a request for offset for some of these increases, especially when it comes to the food waste. I think that we should find a way to do that because I, I think that that is something that, that would really be beneficial. Um, I appreciate those who came to speak tonight because not only did you let us know how you felt about the opportunity to raise prices, but you gave some very good feedback to Burtek about the service that we're receiving here. And um, Mr. Arrigan has heard directly from me about some of my issues that I have been hearing and, and the ones that I've personally seen. But I, I really appreciate that he got to hear from others tonight. And I know that he will go back and, and see what can be done to alleviate those issues. And then our city staff has been able to hear those issues as well. And so they can work with Burtek to figure out the best way that we can to align our efforts to make sure that we're getting the services that, that should be provided through this contract. So at this time, what would my colleagues like to do with this item? I'm gonna go ahead and make the motion to adopt the resolution of the City Council of the City of Grand Terrace, California, approving an increase of residential, commercial, and multifamily housing Solid waste collection, recycle, and disposable service rates. Second. All right, I have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem, a second by Councilmember Wilson. Any further deliberation at this time? All right, 
Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, will you call the vote, please? Councilmember Allen? Yes. Councilmember Wilson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hussey? Yes. And Mayor McNabar? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. All right, thank you. So we move on to the rest of our agenda. We have no unfinished business. So we will move to new business. We will begin tonight. Item number 12 on our agenda, appointment of Conrad Bolowich as the city manager and approval of city manager employment agreement. If Noelle Carpenter, senior management analyst, would come forward, please, and give us a staff report. Good evening, Mayor McNabo, Mayor Pro Tem Hussey, Council Member Allen, Council Member Wilson. Thank you for um, considering this item tonight. Tonight, I bring before you a resolution to adopt appointing Conrad Bolowich as city manager and approving the city manager employment agreement effective January 4th, 2022. Uh, this action does absolutely support the 2030 vision statement of the city of Grand Terrace and the 2014-2020 strategic plan to preserve and protect the community and its exceptional quality of life through thoughtful planning within the constraints of fiscally responsible government and providing an exceptionally safe, well-managed city. I would like to go over the background in regards to the resolution and recommendation. Um, earlier this year, the City Council engaged the Ralph Anderson and Associates executive search firm to conduct a recruitment to fill the current va currently vacant permanent city manager position. Fred Wilson of Ra Ralph Anderson and Associates worked closely with the City Council to prepare and publicize and advertise a brochure for the position. City Council chose to proceed with negotiating an employment agreement with Conrad Bolowich. Mr. Bolowich has 15 years of local government experience. He has served for the past 14 years as assistant city manager for the, Loma, for the city of Loma Linda, California. Prior to that, he worked as the infrastructure inspector for the city of Loma Linda. Mr. Bolowich began his local government career in the city of Loma Linda in 2006. Mr. Bolowich has held multiple leadership positions since 1980, including the following, Assistant City Manager, Infrastructure Inspector for the City of Loma Linda, Building Inspector for Wildan Companies, Construction Superintendent for Ice Builders, Senior Project Manager for IBM, and VP of Operations, Director of Finance, and Paramedic, Paramedic Chief for American Medical Response. Mr. Bolowich has earned multiple recognitions as a success successful leader in the Inland Empire. He served as a trustee board member at San Gregorio Pass Memorial Hospital. And Mr. Bolowich earned a bachelor's degree at California, California State University. Items for discussion, um, the city council will now consider whether to appoint Conrad Bolowich as city manager and approve the proposed employment agreement, which has been signed by Mr. Bolowich. If approved, Mr. Bolowich's first day as city manager will be January 4th, 2022. Current interim city manager, Michael Milheiser, will complete his interim position with the city of Grand Terrace on January 3rd, 2022, if the employment agreement with Mr. Bolowich is approved. Approval of the resolution included as attachment A would appoint Mr. Bolowich as city manager and approve the city manager employment agreement, which is attachment B. California Government Code Section 54953C3 requires an oral report in an open meeting summarizing the proposed final action on salaries, salary schedules, or compensation paid in the form of fringe benefits of a city manager. The following terms of Mr. Bolowich's proposed employment agreement will be stated verbally as part of a staff report on this agenda item.
Number one, annual salary of $211,200. Number two, health insurance premium contribution of $1,416.67 per month to equal $17,000 per year. Number three, a vehicle allowance of $416.67 per month to equal $5,000 per year. Number four, cell phone allowance of $100 per month to equal $1,200 per year. Number five, a sick leave accrual at eight hours per month with a cap of 480 hours and a starting bank of 80 hours. Number six, vacation leave of 80 hours per year through five years of service with a cap of 480 hours and a starting bank of 80 hours. Administ number seven, administrative management leave of 80 hours per year with a cap of 80 hours. Number eight, retirement benefits. City CalPERS second tier plan for miscellaneous employees, which is 2% at 60. Number nine, a three year contract term. And number 10, a six month severance package if terminated without cause. In regards to the fiscal impact, the cost associated with the city manager employment agreement is included in the city's 2000 fiscal year 2021-22 adopted budget. And recommendations. City staff recommends that the city council adopt the resolution appointing Conrad Bolovich as city manager and approving the city manager employment agreement as presented. Oh. Thank you very much. And may I answer any questions you may have? Thank you so much for that report. Of course. Ms. Carpenter. Are there questions for staff at this time? All right, seeing none, very well done in your report. I will open it up for public comment. Are there any requests to speak on this item? No, Madam Mayor. All right, so I will close public comment and bring it back to council for their consideration, deliberation, and things like that. Council Member Allen. <clears throat> Madam Mayor, I'd like to make a, a Motion that we adopt a resolution of the City Council of the City of Grand Terrace appointing Conrad Bolowich as City Manager and approving a City Manager employment agreement between the City of Grand Terrace and Conrad Bolowich. Second. All right, so motion by Council Member Allen, second by Council Member Wilson. Any further discussion on this item? All right, Madam City Clerk, if you would please. Council Member Allen. Yes. Council Member Wilson. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hesse. Yes. Mayor McNabo. Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you so much. Mr. Bolowich, please come forward and say a few words to us. Thank you. Th thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Council Members. You know, it's really an honor to be uh, selected by you to be a, a servant to the city of Grand Terrace and its residents. I'm looking forward to working with all of you, um, and I'm really excited to be in, in such a wonderfully engaged community with the ladies back here and, and all that they've done. And it, just as importantly, with the gentleman who left, who took the time to come down here and, and speak out and voice their opinions, and that's what keeps a community healthy and vibrant and, um, and active. And I'm, I'm looking forward to being a part of this community and thank you once again for inviting me to, to be part of that and to be a servant to the community. And, and one final thing I really do am, am looking forward to working with the exceptional staff. I've heard nothing but good things about everybody here and I'm really looking forward to working with them. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we are looking forward to working with you. All right, on to item number 12. Amendment to Statement of Benefits Pertaining to Holidays and Employee Health Plan. Ms. Noelle Carpenter, Senior Management Analyst, once again. Good evening again, and thank you so much. <laughs> um, Mayor McNabo, Mayor Pro Tem Hussey, Council Member Allen, and Council Member 
Wilson. Um, this item I present before you is to a, a recommendation to adopt a resolution amending the statement of benefits sections pertaining to holidays and employee health plan with an effective date of January 1st, 2022. This action does support the 2030 vision statement. This meets the goal number four of the Grand Terrace 2030 vision statement and 2014 strategic plan and um, developing and implementing successful partnerships. I would like to give you some background in regards to this item. On August 24th, 2021, the City Council of the City of Grand Terrace accepted a tentative agreement and approved a memorandum of understanding between the City of Grand Terrace and the recognized employee organization identified as the Teamsters Local 1932 for the period of July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2024. The memorandum of understanding included a designated holiday schedule and a major medical insurance contribution that differs from the statement of benefits. The memorandum of understanding between the City of Grand Terrace and the Teamsters Local 1932 is not inclusive of all City of Grand Terrace active benefit eligible employee groups and creates differences amongst the City's various active benefit eligible employee groups regarding observed employee paid holidays and the City's contribution towards major medical insurance. Per Resolution 2015-10, the objective of the Statement of Benefits is to, is to provide an equitable, equitable system of personnel compensation. The City currently employs 11 benefit-eligible staff members who are covered solely by the Statement of Benefits and 10 benefit-eligible staff members who are covered by the Teamsters Local 1932 MOU. Without an amendment to the Statement of Benefits, the employee groups will continue to observe different holiday schedules and be eligible for different major medical insurance contributions. Staff presents for City Council's consideration an amendment to the Statement of Benefits that would make holiday and major medical insurance benefits consistent between City of Grand Terrace active employee eligible groups. An alignment of the observed holiday schedule for active benefit eligible employee groups at the City of Grand Terrace ensures a seamless level of public service for the community during all open days of operation at all City of Grand Terrace facilities. There is no change to the number of paid employee city holidays per year all groups of active benefit eligible employees shall continue to receive 13 designated holidays and two floating holidays per calendar year. On this screen, you can see the differences that would be approved tonight if the holiday changes align. Anything in red states something that would change. On the left hand side of the listing you'll see holidays in black. You'll see one holiday, Columbus Day, line through. The Teamsters do not recognize Columbus Day. On the right-hand side, you'll see the day of observation. Our current statement of benefits does not designate the day that the holiday will be observed. The Teamsters MOU does. This will allow us to observe the holidays on the same days as the Teamsters. We also ask that you add some additional language in regards to the holidays. This language is included in the Teamsters MOU. Floating holidays. All employees shall receive two floating holidays per calendar year. Employees entitled to two, two floating holidays shall be paid the equivalent of the employee's one workday of compensation for the floating holiday. Floating holidays must be used by the end of the corresponding cal calendar year. Any floating holiday hours not used by the end of the calendar year will be cashed out and included in the first pay period in January. If any of the holidays fall on a Friday or Saturday, the holiday will not be observed on the preceding Wednesday or Thursday. For any holiday that falls on a Sunday, 
the city manager shall have the discretion as to whether that holiday be observed on the following Monday. Employees entitled to holidays shall be paid the equivalent of the employee's one work day of compensation for the holiday. Medical insurance contribution changes. Providing an equitable contribution to all active benefit eligible employee groups at the City of Grand Terrace ensures the intent of providing equitable access to medical insurance and upholds the City's objective to attract to employment the best and most competent persons available and to provide for an equitable system of compensation. Currently, 11 active benefit eligible City employees who are covered solely by the Statement of Benefits are eligible to receive a medical insurance contribution of $645 per month, while Teamsters Local 1932 active benefit eligible employees are eligible to receive an amount equal to the employee-only Kaiser Region 3 premium rate of $669.84 per month. By amending the Statement of Benefits, unrepresented benefit-eligible employees will also receive an amount equal to the employee-only Kaiser Region 3 premium rate. This rate will increase to $719.78 effective January 1, 2022. The fiscal impact. The cost associated with the city's contribution for the health contract with CalPERS is included in the city's fiscal year 2021-22 adopted budget. There is no cost associated to the alignment of city paid holidays. There is no change to the city's fiscal year 2021-2022 adopted budget. It is recommended that the City Council adopt the attached resolution amending the Statement of Benefits pertaining to sections related to holidays and employee health plan as presented. May I answer any questions you may have? Thank you, Ms. Carpenter. Are there questions of staff at this time? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Hussey. Thank you for your presentation. Do the employees get a floating holidays right now? Do, do they have the two floating holidays? Yes, employees do have two floating holidays right now. So what's, what's the difference on the holidays that we're looking at compared to the last time? Is it the same? The difference is that Columbus Day will be eliminated and Cesar Chavez Day will be recognized. And also that holidays have, there, there's language included that designates which day the holidays will be observed. For instance, um, Veterans Day will be observed on a second Monday in November rather than the actual Veterans Day. That means that city staff will be here on Veterans Day if it does not fall on the second Monday in November. Um, in regards to floating holidays, floating holidays are the same. There are two floating holidays per year, but it does, um, Define that the floating holidays will be cashed out if not used on the first pay period in January. In the current language, the floating holidays are cashed out if not used <clears throat> in the final pay period of December. It also designates that floating holidays will pay, <clears throat> be paid at the employee's daily rate. Okay, so Veterans Day, why aren't they taking Veterans Day off? the same time that when Veterans Day is going. Uh, the Teamsters Local 1932 negotiated to recognize Veterans Day on the second Monday in November rather than the actual holiday. Um, I will explain briefly what happened this past Veterans Day. Our Teamsters members were off on Monday, the second Monday of November. Our non-represented employees were at work. Then on Veterans Day, which was November 11th, our Teamsters members were at work and our um, other staff members were off. It was actually a benefit to the city to have the Teamsters members at work on Veterans Day because they were there to assist with the ceremony, with the setup and teardown of seating, the podium and other needs that were met that day. Um, in the past, when Veterans Day does have their recognition, 
staff members who come in are coming in on a recognized holiday and then subject to overtime for that day. By having staff members there and available on Veterans Day, we're able to meet the needs of the community in regards to their recognition ceremony. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then if an employee wants to use a floating holiday to take Veterans Day, on Veterans Day they are able to do that as well? Yes, they can, or they can use their vacation leave if they, ch they choose to do so. Further questions? Okay, seeing none. Thank you very much. Any requests to speak on this item? No, Madam Mayor. All right, so we'll bring it back to council for their consideration. Uh, Council Mayor. Council Member wanna... Allen. <clears throat> I'll, I want to ask a question. But I, you've already closed it, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all right. I'm looking for a motion. Do we want to approve it? Do we want to not approve it? So I'll make the motion to adopt a resolution of the City Council of the City of Grand Terrace amending the Statement of Benefits sections pertaining to holidays and employee health plan. All right, well, I'll second it for a vote. Is there any further discussion? All right, please call the vote. Council Member Allen? Yes. Council Member Wilson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hussey? Yes. Mayor McNamara? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. So we will move on to item 14 approval of amendment number one to the Professional Services Agreement for Interim Finance Director and Administrative Services with Rogers, Anderson, Malady, and Scott, LLP. Mr. Michael Milheiser, Interim City Manager. Madam Mayor, members of the council, you get an old timer presentation on this item. No, nothing on the screen. First time I was here in July, I saw Mr. Shea. I hadn't seen him for 20 years. He had red hair the last time I saw him until I showed up here this July, he said, I said, Mr. Shea, are you dying at white? He said, no, it's the wisdom I've gained in municipal uh, government and finance over the years since I last saw you. So with that, I thought, yeah, we probably get along pretty well working here. But he's done an excellent job, his firm, in representing the city of uh, Grand Terrace and, uh, and preserving a finance department and working with our current employees. He's uh, been able to uh, uh, show the, our current employees and train them in some areas that they hadn't had uh, uh, a ten of training in, uh, before. So tonight, in order for our new city manager, who begins uh, January 4th, 2022, we thought it would be in the best interest to continue uh, with the firm that you mentioned, uh, Madam Mayor, for at least up to uh, approximately 60, uh, six months. There's a 90-day provision, and uh, that will give uh, Ms. Carpenter time to work with the city manager and recruit a finance director if that's what he chooses to do. Uh, we are saving, there's no additional expense because the savings is coming from salary savings for the position of the vacated former finance director this past April. Therefore, the recommendation is, and also we are following the 2030 vision statement, which I can't, I could read, but I really can't see. Um, so the recommendation is number one, approve amendment number one to the professional service agreement uh, for the interim finance director and administrative services with the firm of Rams. And I'll say Rams since the Rams won last night. Mm -hmm. If they lost, I would stay the firm, uh, which increases uh, the sum by $90,000 for a total of $217,000 that could be spent depending on how long they uh, end up staying employed uh, by the uh, city of Grand Terrace. And we authorize the mayor to execute agreement number one, execute, execute amendment number one, subject to the city attorney approval as to the form. And Mr. Shea, I don't know, I hope he's not in the audience tonight, is he? I wouldn't have said that. Oh, I see him now, yeah. Oh, I wouldn't have said that if I'd known yeah. he was here. I apologize, Mr. Shea. 
I, I'm sorry. De deeply sorry. I, I, we, we could give I'll make him, it up to him later. We could give him equal time. Okay. okay. Hey, that's our recommendation, Madam Mayor, members of the council. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Milheiser. Are there questions of staff at this time? No? Okay. Mr. Shea, did you want equal time? Uh, Your Honorable Mayor, City Council, um, really appreciate the opportunity to keep helping. Um, it's been a pleasure working with Mr. Milheiser. We're going to miss him, that's for sure. I'm sure Adrian could, and Deborah could back that up. Um, the gray hair is the wisdom, but it's also the four kids, so that's part of it. So. But really appreciate the opportunity. Thanks. Thank you so much. All right. Um, since I have not seen that we have questions of staff, um, is there a request to speak on this item? And no, Madam Mayor. All right. So we'll bring it back to Council for consideration of this item to amend the professional services agreement. Um, Mayor, I'm, I make a motion with that we uh, follow staff recommendations one and two. All right. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motion by Council Member Allen, second by Council Member Wilson. Any further discussion on this item? All right, seeing none, Madam City Clerk. Council Member Allen? Yes. Council Member Wilson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hussey? Yes. And Mayor McNabow? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And um, glad to have you with us for a little bit longer, Mr. Shea. Thank you. All right, so item 15, the 2021 through 2029 draft housing element presented by Steve Weiss, Planning and Development Services Director. Mr. Weiss. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I, I guess it's appropriate that I make the final presentation for the evening. Just sheer coincidence, but um, it's a pleasure to be here and to serve you. Um, tonight's item is the draft 2021 um, housing element update and the vision for this is uh, supports goal one, it ensures fiscal viability and also promotes economic development by providing an internally consistent element and being compliant with, with state law. And just a little bit of background to make my presentation brief. On June 17th of uh, this year, the Planning Commission did conduct a study session regarding the housing element and then we prepared um, housing, um, a draft housing element with, comp with the input from the um, Planning Commission and the public, and on October 21st, um, the Planning Commission conducted a public hearing to review the draft element, and based on the, ele um, the comments, public comments, we prepared a revised uh, draft housing element to, uh, for review by the City Council. And the purpose of tonight's meeting is to receive additional comments on the draft from interested um, stakeholders, the Council, and also it must be submitted to the California Department of Housing and Community Development for review pursuant to state law. And Adrian has reminded me to, of the dates. Um, by, by law, um, the certified housing element should be completed by February of 2022. Uh, moving on, um, uh, Ms. City Clerk, is uh, our consultant on Zoom possibly? No, Director Weiss, he is not. He's not on, okay. He's got a couple of housing elements to juggle, so I will do my best to, to do justice. So the housing element um, updates are required every eight years. Um, we, this is called the sixth, sixth cycle in the 2021 20, through 2029 updates as is required by state law. And um, every time a housing element comes in, the legal requirements become more and more extensive uh, for the housing element. Um, for certification, um, housing is a matter uh, to the state of statewide importance and limitations on local land use control. Uh, the state legislature has delegated um, HCD or housing and community development um, as the authority to review housing elements for compliance or what we call certification. Uh, potential legal consequences for non-compliance could be um, jeopardizing certain um, important infrastructure uh, plans and, and that. So um, we have always worked, strived for compliance with everything. Um, and certification supports the legal validity of the housing element and 
also the general plan with consistency. Um, the question always is, what is affordable housing? Well, there is there is a formula, and it was and it was it was set up through the state, and it was also uh, validated through the Southern California Association of Governments. And I'm sure you read there was a lot of discussion about what that median income is, what that sweet spot is, and so the reality is, I'm I'm not going to reiterate the whole chart, but it's pretty. I think these, it's pretty clear to show that um, what affordable rents are, extremely low, is less than 30% of the HUD adjusted median income. Uh, very low is 31 to 50%, low is 51 to 80, and moderate is 81 to 120%. So you're looking at uh, 93,000 for a family of four. And then above mod is um, greater than 120%, and those, those are market, market housing. And if you have any questions, please feel free to just ask. Um, uh, the key requirements are housing regulations um, uh, must be consistent with state law, and there are also um, issues of um, special needs. And special needs really in this area deal with um, destitute, homeless, um, special needs uh, with, with um, uh, physical needs and that. And also the big one you hear of it's RENA, Regional Housing Needs Assessment. Um, and the state has determined that every jurisdiction has to prove an area to accommodate assigned needs. It can't force us to build it, but we have to identify areas. And as you know, Grand Terrace being 3.1 square miles has limited space, mostly along the freeway areas right now, the 215. So the arena requirements, so we must ensure that the plans and development regulations can accommodate the RENA allocation in all income categories. And the housing element certification requires adequate sites. And that's what we've been working on in earnest with the community and, and others um, and nonprofits. And production housing element certification is not contingent on achieving the RENA allocation, but housing production falls short of the RENA allocation, streamline permit processing might might come down from the state. An example might be buy right housing, for example. Just let you know how that goes. So this looks like a lot of units here. 630 arena units are identified um, at about 20 units an acre and up. Um, 630 total, very low, low, moderate, and above mod. Just to give you an idea, Colton has 5,000 units that they're going to have to be responsible for. Um, the planning target, it's not a construction quota. Sites inventory, they must accommodate the regional housing needs assessment and lower, low income um, need be accommodated through different options. Multifamily residential, apartments, 20, 20 plus units an acre, which sounds incredibly high, but you're seeing more and more of these three story um, projects coming up. Mixed use or overlay zoning um, you could do a transit village with, with um, multifamily housing. And then the ADU, you hear a lot about accessory dwelling units. Everybody wants to put one in their yard if they have the space, you know. That's what, I, that's what we're trying, but it's, you know, can be tough. Um, and if sites, um, and if sites uh, does not accommodate the, re, uh, the re regional housing needs, rezoning is required. And I'll get, I'm almost done, but I'll get into that real quick on you. So we've identified, um, a number of properties, and I have a map to show you this. this is the Greens Group, which you're very familiar with. Uh, there's Grand Terrace Road, there's several parcels along there. Uh, Canal Village, little triangle there on Canal. Uh, 21712 Vivienda, and also the parcel just to the west of there, which is M2 zoning. Um, 12667 Michigan, which is, um, you'll see a big green construction fence around on Pico and Michigan and also um, the main, main Street parcels that are right now a recycling facility, a miracle grow, and a pallet yard. There's the map right there. So those are potential candidates that could be considered for the regional housing needs and also getting the housing element up to HCD to consider certification. So the milestones are, done a lot of research, 
We've done our outreach. We've been to the Planning Commission a couple of times. It's actually not a requirement to go to the council on this for certification, but we felt that we were obligated to take it to you to give you this background information. Um, obviously, uh, prepare a draft housing element, have some review on it, Planning Commission reviews. Now it's City Council. After tonight, if you move us on, then we'll send it to HCD for review and consultation. And that's now. Next quarter, prepare the revised housing element, public review, so Planning Commission reviews and City Council hearing and adop adoption, you'll see it again. And that's when you'll go through the, the big discussion, the legislative decisions. And then HCD review and certification. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much the, the drill here. Um, and on our recommendation, just so I, I don't think I've, yeah, well, the information, we've had everything on the website, um, and it's been there, and it's been updated through the process. And questions and comments, we're gonna have Heidi Aguirre, who's our associate planner, who's very knowledgeable on the subject, to be um, the coordinator and taking in everything. And uh, so, Comments, you can have comments all the way to the very end, through, through, through 22. And um, so staff recommends that the council receive the presentation, receive comments, and provide comments to staff. That concludes staff presentation, and I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Director Weiss. I have a question before I open it up to my colleagues. Was there a section in there on homeless shelters? And is it, we've had um, San Bernardino provide those services for us. Are we now required to create an area within our city that uh, offers that service? Not for a homeless shelter, but through our community development block grant, we actually are developing a contract to work with, a, with a, um, an organization called Lighthouse that will help with um, displaced individuals, whether they're homeless or they're people with special needs. Okay, thank you. Questions for staff? Council Member Wilson. Please tell me that not that the state has come down in their great wisdom to, to uh, double and triple and quadruple our density, uh, that despite the fact that most parcels don't pencil under this kind of game, uh, and if they did pencil before and they were shovel ready, they would have already received funding, that the state is going to fund the difference so that we can, you know, drop down to a 30% of me uh, median income. You're, you're going to be, that, uh, you're referring to Senate Bill 9? Mm -hmm. And actually, I believe in the first quarter of next year, I think an urgency ordinance will be brought to the council so they can consider um, coming up with a cogent ordinance that will address this and, important matter. And there, that I know of, everything I've researched, there is no funding mm -hmm. from the state coming for this. And no. That, and so it's, a, it's another, um, it's another time the state has made a mandate and has no funding mechanism whatsoever to, to require it to be done. And it's going to affect our quality of life by a tremendous percentage. There will be more assembly bills coming. Mm -hmm. They're trying to make it Los Angeles out here. It's the reason why people moved out here. They wanted to have a little bit of room, a little bit of stretching room. And while I appreciate the, the plight of the, of the homeless, I really think that this is a, this is a very uninformed uh, legislation because I was a party to uh, some of the uh, advisory on, on this and one of the main groups uh, responsible for doing uh, multifamily and uh, uh, more towards affordable product uh, asked the question, when are they gonna put somebody in the game that has some skin in the game? I mean, in other words, when are they gonna ask an opinion from somebody that actually has to make their living at this? And the government, the state government, for some reason, has refused to do that. Instead, they've got a hold of architects and engineers who would gladly spend a lot of money, you know, the state's money, trying to put these things together. And 
there's no funding. How do you foresee this happening as a professional? Those are, those are, you're very observant. Um, 40 years I've been in this business, I know you have too. Um, I've, seen, I've seen growth, trend. Um, there has to be a reason for everything. Um, for example, I know in Riverside they just put up a big FDA building and things like this. It has, what the state's trying to do is they're trying to push the local agencies into developing incentive-based programs to encourage mixed use and affordable housing. And there are some areas, and especially if you travel through the Silicon Valley and parts of Los Angeles, San Diego, where the densities are 80, 150 units an acre, 500 units an acre, because there's a tremendous amount of employment in those areas. Irvine, one, one, one job, uh, excuse me, three jobs for every house in that community. I mean, if we were in that position here, you might see that, but there is, there's this feeling that this is coming and this is coming, and that's why it's a 21 through 29 housing element, and I, I'm only saying that there's going to be more and more of a regional um, push to make locals work with them. Okay. That's at least my professional opinion. Thank you for your answer. Further questions for staff? All right. Are there any requests to speak on this item? Mr. Daryl Moore. Uh, Daryl Moore, 22750 Monona Drive, GT. Um, the presentation Steve made, we have three of the sites that he referenced for high density and it's our intention to try and move them along and, and we support the density. Uh, uh, but uh, as Mr. Wilson said, these are very difficult projects. Like anything below moderate is virtually impossible to make work. Uh, and, and even the, the numbers that repeat it, they're showing their rents by different categories. Those actually aren't the rents, so those are the housing costs. It, it, you have to also allow for utilities and other costs. So, I mean, I, I don't know how this is ever gonna play out, but uh, we, su we support some higher density. We think we'd do a good job if we do it. And, and to get 20 plus units per acres, you're gonna see three story. There's no other way to get it. Um, so I, I, I guess I support uh, Steve's work, but I, I have no idea how anybody's gonna make those, those lower income levels work. And, and I, I guess, like everybody else, I don't even particularly want them in the community, honestly. Uh, I guess that's a problem everybody's had. They, uh, people need a place to live, and if we could make it work economically, we would try and do it, but it's gonna be very difficult. But other than that, I support the, uh, the work that Steve's done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. I appreciate you being here and coming forward and sharing your perspective. Any other requests to speak at this time? No, Madam Mayor. All right. So we'll close public comment and bring it back to council. We are being asked to receive the presentation, receive the public comments, which we've done, both of those, and then um, provide comments to staff as appropriate. So um, any further comments that we want to give to staff? Council Member Allen. <coughs> Thanks, Mayor. So I just want to <clears throat> let Mr. Weiss know that that was a great report. I spent five years on the Planning Commission where I learned about the arena, and then this is the second or third time on the council that I've been listening to a report, and that was a really good one. I appreciated it. it, it I learned something from it each time. Um, are we at a, pl we're still at, we're, we are not at a place where we're required to fulfill it, are we? It's just, having the proper zoning that they're asking for, right? 
That's correct, yeah, Council okay. Member Allen. Yeah. It's, it's a very, very interesting question as regional governance gets more and more, as they up the stakes. We just want to be compliant with state law. But, you know, keep in mind that what Mr. Moore was talking about, density, yeah. it's a question of as density starts to increase, hopefully there's more employment, there's other things, and that will that could attract affordable housing clearing houses that are quite sophisticated. But I don't I haven't had I haven't been contacted by any. So usually we we get contacted by affordable housing places. We have not, so so once we, we had a conversation once about ADUs, and I know you mentioned it in here. <laughs> and I, I think I was told that there are six ADUs in the city. The staff, somebody from staff told me that. But yes. my response to that was, I know there's six ADUs on Brentwood Street, because that's where I live, and I know where all six of them are. So I, I was wondering, if we actually had an accurate number, an actual accurate count of those, and they were, I mean, how would those count against the, our arena we requirement? Do have, we do have accurate numbers. The question is, do we have six legal ADs? Yeah, that's we what have I have was referring legal, to. So we have an extremely proactive code enforcement group that, and we look at any hammer that goes in the, in, and figures out where they are, and we have actually um, second, second living units within, um, all kinds of things, people living in the garages and all that. Um, we do get, we have stop work orders on a lot of these properties and what happens, they come in and sometimes they try to be creative and say, well, we want to make that, turn that into an ADU. But that means they have to comply with all the state building codes and city building code requirements. So some of them come in, some of them don't. I mean, you have to have architecture and engineering expertise to, to build any type of structure in Grand Terrace. Um, I think we'll be seeing more in the future, but we're not gonna see hundreds just because of the topographic challenges that we have in this community. Um, I know we just got one up on Thompson Drive, for example. You know, there's, there's, they're scattered, but we, we certainly, um, we're certainly following state law when it comes to regular accessory dwelling units and what they call junior accessory dwelling units. Yeah, but so I, I understand we're following the law, so, but if we, if we had more, if we knew, if we had more than six, say we had 20, 30, you know, those could count towards absolutely. our arena's requirement, right? Bring, bring it on. Yeah, we're absolutely fine with that. Yes. All right. Any further comments to provide to staff as appropriate requested in our agenda item? Okay. Seeing no more comments. Thank you very much for your report. Mm -hmm. And so we are being asked to receive staff presentation and receive the public comments. And move it on to HCD, yeah. So, so is there a motion to receive each of these items? Motion to receive the items. Okay. Second. Okay, motion by Council Member Allen to receive staff presentation and public comments. And um, second by Council Member Wilson. Any further discussion? All right, Madam City Clerk. Councilmember Allen? Yes. Councilmember Wilson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hussey? Yes. Mayor McNabon? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. And I will say, Director Weiss, that was a lot more concise than I thought it would be. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. I, and I just want to say I really enjoy working with you. I respect all of you, and it's been a, a real pleasure. Thank you very much. All right, so that was our last item. Uh, we have no request for future agenda items. So we'll go to council communications. We'll start with council member Jeff Allen. <clears throat> First thing I would like to say is thanks to Julia and her whole crew for all that. She's still here, so I get to, I get to do that <laughs> and say thanks for that, uh, for what your presentation it was great and what you were presenting about were great events also. Mm -hmm. Thank you, um, everything about them. And I also want to thank Johan and the Cars and Coffee Club for their Christmas toy drive parade that they conducted recently. All the participants and all, also all the folks who went out and donated those toys for that toy drive. Thank you very much for that. Thanks to Lieutenant Lane and his crew, the fire department with fire truck also. It was just a, a tremendous event. And it's, uh, I just think it's great to see what a group of uh, volunteers can do 
in this city without involving city staff, you know, uh, too much. So thank you for that. Um, but thank the city staff and, and um, all the volunteers that came out for the Light Up Grand Terrace event. Um, Frankie Beimer and her crew and the city staff that put that all together. Thank you so much. And it, that, that event just gets bigger and better every year. Um, I, I, I think next year we'll probably be on national TV. <laughs> if not, we should be. And thank you city staff for those great decorations, not just here, but all throughout the city along the streets as we drive along. Thank the staff, thank them for me, will you, Louis? I appreciate that so much and so do all the residents. It really um, shows the great Grand Terrace hometown spirit we have. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Allen. Council Member Doug Wilson. Just so, it just turns out that uh, my wife, and this is n no embellishment, my wife was standing in our living room and she said, you know what I really miss? When Santa Claus used to show up and then we had the fire truck and we had the, the you know, all the, the stuff, you know, I really, really miss that. And two minutes later, I hear a siren in the background and I said, <laughs> Mom, you sure you don't want to go out there and take a look? We stood out there in the yard with the dog, and of course the dog, you know, had a different uh, different motive. Uh, she would have loved it to just run out there and you know climb on the truck. But the uh, the two of us stood out there and yelled at the top of our lungs. Thank you, thank you, hooray, all right, way, and I just want to say that again. That was terrific. It's, uh, it's part of what makes our, our small community so big. And then I would also like to thank those who have served us, who've d elected in their uh, trek to uh, either retire or to go someplace else or, or, or just to recuperate. I greatly appreciate your service. You know, we couldn't have done it without you. And uh, I'm sad to see you go, but happy for for you if it works out in your life plan. And that's all I've got, Mayor. Thanks. Thank you, Council Member. Mayor Pro Tem, Bill Hussey. Thank you, Mayor. Well, Doug, are you sure you weren't out there yelling people to slow down on that thing? <laughs> but um, my colleagues say, you know, the tree lighting ceremony is a beautiful event, which is every year I'm glad we got to come back. And it was just, you know, just seeing the, uh, you know, everybody's faces and, you know, the, the holiday spirit, you know, go on that day. And it was, it was just beautiful. And, um, you know, thank you for all the volunteers who, and staff who did that and staff that stayed there that night too and the volunteers and cleaning up and, you know, just a great event. And then uh, for John, you know, thank you for inviting me for your Christmas cruise. You know, it's, it's a lot easier this year, you know, the, the traffic wise, you know, so I want to. But it was a great event, and you know the toys, and just seeing everybody, you know the residents. When you're when you're driving, you're picking up the toys, and everybody's just so happy to see it, you know, and, and bringing that on. And you know the toy drive for less fortunate, you know, kids. You know they're going to get some extra toys, and you know it's really going to help out some families. And um, thank you, Lieutenant Lane, and all your deputies who are out there working, and um, and thank your wife for my Christmas card here. I didn't see no money in it, so I don't know, but. Good thing. Um, yeah. But I'm just wondering why you brought your wife here. You guys all dressed up. You're supposed to go out to dinner, and you forced her to stay here and listen to the council members. So you better take her out to steak dinner now, right? <laughs> there you go. But anyway, you know, I just, uh, and thank you for taking care of me. I mean, of course, during the Christmas cruise, I there's a semi parked on a residential street, and I, uh, I, I called the lieutenant, and they took care of it, and Code took care of it, too. And, of course, I let Mr. Milheiser, I don't care if he's recuperating, he needs I let him know too, but um, you know, trucks on our residential streets. Uh, you know, like Mr. Wilson was saying earlier. I mean, they damage the roads, and plus they're a hazard. And uh, people had to pull out of the driveway. You know, trying to get around and where everything's going, it's a hazard. But thank you for taking care of that. Real fast response, and um, yeah, and I just want to wish the staff here a Merry Christmas. And the residents of Grand Terrace, Merry Christmas. And congratulations, Steve, on your retirement. I'm sure you'll be out there camping. But i uh, let you know that the state of California is trying to ban generators, so you might not be able to dry camp that much longer. Uh, yeah, go figure. I got two of them now. So if there's a blackout, I don't know what to do. So um, 
Eric, and I know you're not, you know, congratulations, Eric, on your endeavors too, but, you know, really appreciate your hard work. So anyway, Merry Christmas, Grant Terrace, and God bless. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. So this is definitely an evening to be thankful for the, the volunteers that we have in this community. They, they offer such a blessing and make this such a wonderful place to live. So I echo all of my colleagues' comments about how wonderful the events have been that we've had. I wish uh, best wishes to those employees that are leaving us. Mr. Milheiser, you came and you, you helped us through a time where we really needed you. Thank you so much. And um, I did want to announce something that, that came out from Southern California Edison. Um, this came from our rep, Mark Cloud, and he wanted to let us know that the deadline for their Edison Scholar Program has been extended to Monday, December 20th, so this coming Monday. And they are saying, if you know any stellar high school students in your city heading for STEM field, please let them know about this. They are giving $40,000 to each of these scholars that apply and, and are, um, are accepted. And so you can go to the Edison website, edison.com slash home slash community slash edison-scholars.html. So if you know high school students that are heading into those fields, please have them go and apply for this. That would be so wonderful if some of our high school students were able to get these $40,000 scholarships. And so thank you to, um, to our rep, Mark Cloud, for bringing that to the attention as well. And so I will, with that, I'm going to, to wish the best to Council Member Robles, who could not be with us tonight, and hopefully she's back with us soon. We will be going one last time to Mr. Milheiser for his city manager communications. Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. It's been a very uh, delightful to have worked uh, with you, with the city council. Every city council I've worked for over the years, I learned something from each member of the council and I take it with me, hopefully, to another assignment. I appreciate the support uh, you've given me and uh, look forward to, uh, I know you'll look forward to your new city manager appointment and the city will continue to grow and prosper uh, in the future. I'd like to thank the city attorney, the city clerk, who works very hard uh, behind the scenes trying to make this meeting look go very smoothly. Sometimes the report's a little late, but we, we might have improved them a, tiny bit while I was here. At least I talked about making it better, so it made me feel better, but I'm not sure <laughs> I was all that successful. But we, you have a lot of talent here, uh, and I'm sure uh, uh, Conrad will uh, appreciate that. Uh, up, I look up to my right and I see Lewis up there, our building official. He has a lot of potential talent too. He uh, has a master's degree in public administration and is only 30 years old and is a building official, so I know he'll do well. Ms. Carpenter will do well. As I mentioned, our city clerk has, a, I think we'll have an opportunity to grow uh, and uh, take on some additional responsibilities in the future. And for me, thank you very much again. I have a Merry Christmas to the community and Julia and her group. Uh, it's, uh, I go home and tell my wife, well, what do you like working in, in Grant Terrace? I said, the community spirit, Mr. Gallo. Sorry about Columbus Day, but what the heck. All right, we're good. Okay, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Millizer. So we will be recessing to closed session. We have um, two items left. One has been pulled. So we will um, be in closed session conferring with le legal counsel on existing litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9A, case name Sunny Days LLC versus City of Grand Terrace, Case number CIV SB 2107692. And the second item is a conference with real property negotiators pursuant to government code section 54956.8. Property is APN 0276-213-47-000. City negotiator is our interim city manager, Michael Milheiser. Negotiating parties are to be determined and under negotiation is the price in terms of payment. On this item, I will be recusing myself. The, uh, the property in discussion is in proximity to my home and it may, may cause a, an issue later depending on how these negotiations go. And so um, I will not be here um, at the report out. Um, 
Mayor Pro Tem will be reporting out of closed session. And so for those of you who will not be there at that time, our next regular city council meeting will be held on Tuesday, January 11th, 2022 at 6 p.m. And any request to have an item placed on a future agenda must be made in writing and submitted to the city clerk's office and the request will be processed in accordance with council procedures. And so to all of you, happy holidays and Merry Christmas. And thank you again to all of our volunteers and our staff members for the job that they do. We are at this time in recess to closed session. for the bosses. All right, well, thank you. We're going to reconvene the open session. Um, it was on item two, conference with legal counsel existing litigation for uh, Sunny Days LLC versus City of Grand Terrace, government code section 54956.9. Um, there's no uh, action, reportable action is taken on that right now. And uh, number item three, conference with real property negotiator pursue the government code section 54956.8 property. Um, TAC number is uh, APN 0276-213-47-0000. Uh, we uh, established an ad hoc committee for um, that item. It's going to be uh, Councilmember Wilson and Councilmember Allen to go ahead and take care of that for further actions that need to be uh, established and that's all I have. So um, our next regular city council meeting will be held on Tuesday, January 11th, 2022 at 6 p.m. Any request to have an item placed on a further agenda. Future agenda must be made in writing and submitted to the city clerk's office and the request will be processed in accordance to council procedures. And once again, thank you, Mike, for all your hard work. I didn't get to thank you before, but you know, you and your family have a Merry Christmas and Merry Christmas, Grand Terrace. Thank you. Good night.